Hi, I'm Richard Moraes, Senior Minister at Unity of Phoenix Spiritual Center, and I want to thank you for visiting our website and for tuning in to today's message. If you feel inspired by today's talk, I really encourage you to make a donation by hitting that button below and making a contribution to this ministry. It'll allow us to continue these messages online and to do the great work we do here at Unity of Phoenix, which is to inspire people to live better lives. So thanks for tuning in, thanks for your support, and we hope to see you at a Sunday real soon. Morning again, everyone. And a special shout out to everybody who tunes in and watches us online. So why don't mummies go on vacation? Why don't mummies go on vacation? Because they're afraid to relax and unwind. Okay. okay. <laughs> what does bread do on vacation? It just loaves around. Loaves around. And where do eggs go on vacation? New York City. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Clearly, I've been on vacation. My jokes aren't quite up to scratch yet. But I uh, got to tell you, um, so I got back from my two-month um, sabbatical, which I get every uh, three years, two full months. And I'll tell you, it was the best. I've had, in my 20 years, three sabbaticals. And this was the best, by far, it was the best vacation I ever had in my life. It was fabulous, it was enjoyable, it was the greatest experience. So, don't you just love vacation? How many people love going on vacation? Don't we all not love going on vacation? But here's an interesting statistic. Americans are not very good at going on vacation or taking time off. I read an article and it was entitled, Americans are still terrible at taking vacations. And what it said is that we leave 662 million days of unused vacation annually. In 2013, 42% of American workers did not take a single vacation day. On average, the average uh, American gets about two to three weeks of vacation and only 50% use all of it. In Europe, on average, they get five to six weeks of vacation, and 90% of them take all of it. It is not uncommon to hear someone in the U.S. say, I haven't been on vacation in years. Anybody ever heard somebody say, or been someone who hasn't? And my question is, why? Why do we, when we are entitled to vacation, don't take vacation? or ourselves struggle in, in taking it. And the first one is, I think, our, we, we get a little carried away with our work ethic. You know, we believe in hard work and discipline and putting in the extra effort and giving it your all. You know, also, uh, working hard is a path to uh, climbing the corporate ladder. You know, we are driven to success in our culture. It's a go, 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 put your nose to the grindstone and work hard. We praise people who work long hours. If you're the last one in the office, there's, there's prestige about that. It's a sign of commitment uh, and, and dedication. You know, we even attach our own personal value and, and self-worth in our work and what we do. And we feel like we always need to keep working to keep uh, proving more. Sometimes the fear of, of being laid off. And sometimes we have a negative thing of taking time off. I have a doctor friend, and she won't let herself sleep in on her day off. She thinks it's slacking. I mean, it is amazing. We have some negative ideas about, about uh, time off and vacation. And there's tons of studies that show if you don't take breaks, if you don't take vacations, if you don't take time off, it has a serious impact on our health, on our blood pressure, on our heart, increases in inflammation, our mental sharpness and clarity and focus. And it also affects our relationships. I mean, it affects our lives in such detrimental ways, and yet we still don't seem to take as much vacation and time off. And we don't think, I don't think we always take it as seriously and realize what a valuable and important part of our lives it is. I mean, working hard is a great thing. It's good, it's important. But when we overdo it, it leaves us exhausted, it leaves us overworked, anxious, stressed, and having our lives feel out of balance. And then we keep believing that if we want to keep up that kind of life, we have to keep working at that same level. And so it keeps us stuck. How many people ever felt overwork, exhausted, stress from working so much? And how many people could use a vacation right now or really soon? And how many people would absolutely admit that there have been times in your life where you felt a little guilty 
or embarrassed about taking all your time off. Anybody ever felt that? That is amazing to me. And I'll tell you, in, in meditating and uh, you know, over my um, vacation time and my sabbatical time, you know, I, I did a lot of observing and noticing about myself, learning about myself. And because I, this was the best uh, I'd ever had, I was wondering what was it that, that made it so? And he, there are three things I want to share with you that really helped make it the best uh, vacation and time off uh, of my life. Uh, and the first one is that we tend to stay in this very, very consistent, habitual process of overworking and being stressed all the time. We are constantly tense, constantly worried, and constantly just kind of stiff be because we work so much. Let me give an example. Everyone just kind of notice right now your neck and your shoulders. Notice them. Uh, if there's any tension, everyone just take a deep breath. Just kind of relax, relax your neck and your shoulders. Again, another deep breath. Relax your neck, your shoulders, your entire body. Just relax into your chair. And how many would say just with those two breaths, you feel a little bit more relaxed? And my question is, why were you tense in the first place? This is a church. <laughs> is this not a place we think we ought to just naturally relax? That's how habitually stressed we are, that wherever we are, whether it's in church or even on a beach or even poolside with an adult beverage, or getting a massage. Just because your body there is there doesn't mean that you're relaxed. And what I've come to realize that any real renewal from a vacation, that the number one thing is how well did you relax and quiet your mind? Your mind. It is very common that people are on vacation and they're thinking about work. It's very common they're on vacation still taking calls from work or checking emails or, or, or worrying, did that project or will that project get finished? You know, the mind is a beautiful and wonderful thing, and, and, and it can bring creativity, but when we are constantly worrying and can't uh, slow it down, it, it is a difficult challenge. How many people have ever been lying in bed, your body's exhausted, you're so tired, you're ready to sleep, but your brain is still going a million miles an hour? Anybody have that? Anybody ever have something that happened weeks ago, but you still keep replaying it in your head, still keep getting worked up about it? You know, it, it, that's why the Apostle Paul said, do not conform to the patterns of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Why? Because he knew our minds can go a mile a minute. Our minds can get distracted. And then we'll get so worried and anxious and fearful in our mind, you can't enjoy anything. I don't care if you're on a beach or wherever you might be. You can't get relaxed. You can't get the renewal that we want without relaxing our minds. And so, the, so we actually have to consciously, deliberately, and intentionally practice quieting and relaxing our mind because it doesn't happen in the culture and the, and the way that we are. It just doesn't. That we have to actually work on it. And here's three things we can do that we need to relax our mind. The first one is to become still. And that is to quiet ourselves and to just slow down just to pause, to just get calm and centered. And for most people, the best way is to follow your breath, you know, doing meditation, following your breath, or doing yoga, because that brings us a sense of peace and calm and quietness. You know, when it says, be still and know that I am God, it's being still connects you with all that God is, which is peace and love and possibility and wisdom and joy. We are in a go-go world and sometimes we just need to pause and be still. The second thing that takes us into relaxation that we need is that we need to absolutely trust that God's got us. Most of the time that we're worried or afraid, it's because we're not sure if everything's gonna work out. And the question is, can we get to the place where we absolutely trust that God's got us? that God loves us, that this universe is actually supporting our success and happiness. You know, that this universe is providing all that we need. It's already there for us. We don't have to fight. We don't have to struggle. We don't have to obsess or worry. We can actually just trust that all things are working together for our good. Trust that God has a plan and purpose for our life. Trust that we have all the resources that we need. I am 100% supported by life. Together, 
I am 100% supported by life. The universe is conspiring for my happiness and success. Together, the universe is conspiring for my happiness and success. Take a deep breath. And can you trust that God's got you? Can you trust that whatever your major problem is right now, that it's going to work out? Can you trust wherever there is a lack of ease, that peace will fill its place and there will be an answer that will lift you to a higher level of joy and happiness? Trust is the thing that helps us relax. And then the final one is to just let go. And you know what letting go does? It actually creates some space, calmness and openness that actually brings forth creativity and possibilities and ideas that were not there from before. It is in the quietness that, that magnificence and creativity and ideas come. How many people saw the Christopher Robin movie, that movie? There's a line by Winnie the Pooh, and he says, um, doing nothing often leads to the very best of something. And sometimes, you know, we don't value quietness, calmness, nothingness, stillness, but it is out of that that greatness comes, that inspiration comes, that renewal and refreshment and creativity comes. So the question is, are you willing to take time just to relax your mind and quiet your mind? Because that brings the deepest rest and the best results possible. Sometimes we think vac uh, the thing that makes vacation is going to really cool places like Hawaii. You know, going to the mountains, going. And it's good. That change really helps. But somebody once wrote a book that says, wherever you go, there you are. <laughs> and so it ain't just about going to the place. It's what we take with us that in those places to quiet ourselves, to relax ourselves, and to be still. Jesus always said things like, come apart a while and rest. And you're saying, just withdraw from the busyness right in here and get to your quiet place. He said, when you pray, go to your inner chamber and close the door and pray to your Father in secret. And he meant close the door from the distraction of the world and go to that quiet place. You know, Einstein, when he was thinking about uh, creative stuff and solutions and problem solving, you know what the first thing he did was? He took a nap because he knew quieting the mind would bring forth new and greater ideas. So the first thing I did that helped myself have a great vacation was consistently and regularly when I went to some nice places, and I did, that I still took time to quiet my mind. And the second thing that, that's important for us to learn to do is to learn how to become better receivers. You know, sometimes we withhold our own good. We hold ourselves back from having as much happiness and love and success in our lives. Sometimes we're a little stingy and cheap uh, with ourselves. Sometimes we're not as kind and gentle or generous with ourselves. Sometimes we would rather go without than give ourselves what it is that we need, thinking that we're being wiser or more economical or whatever it might be. We'll spend lots of money on other people, but we don't always spend a lot of money on ourselves. You know, we'll do a lot of kind things for others, but sometimes we don't do kind things for ourselves. You know, we will uh, take time for other people, but we don't always take time for ourselves. How many people have ever had the money to buy something you really wanted, but you held back because you kind of felt giddy, uh, guilty or felt kind of unworthy of buying something that nice? Okay, only three people. That's amazing. <laughs> and the thing about it is we hold back from ourselves even when we're in some of these great places. It is amazing. We tell ourselves stories that there just isn't enough. There's not enough. There isn't enough this. There isn't enough money. There isn't enough love, time. That's not the problem. There is abundance of all the things we could ever need. The question is, how much do we let in? There's all the love in the world. There's an unlimited amount of love. The question is, how much love do you let into your heart and your life? There's all the happiness in the world as possible. How much happiness are you letting in and letting yourself accept and receive? There's all the success and joy uh, and goodness, but how much are we letting in to ourselves? Most of us stop the flow. We have a hard time accepting, you know, compliments. We have a hard time accepting happiness and success and greater levels of love. It sometimes freaks us out, and we end up shutting down. And we need to open greater channels to be good receivers, to allow ourselves 
You know, I think um, it's important for us to get love from the most important person in the world, and that's ourselves. To be treated kindly by the most important person, and that's ourselves. To receive generosity from the most important person, and that is ourselves. You know, God will fill our lives as full as we want, but the limit is how much can we hold? What is our capacity to receive and accept and enjoy that good? Everybody remember the story of the widow's oil in 2 Kings? Uh, a widow, she, her husband died. She didn't have any money. She went to Elisha and said, hey, what should I do? She, he said, what do you got in your house? She said, I got a little bit of oil. She said, great. Then go to all your neighbors, ask for as many vessels as possible. Then go close the door, take that little bit of oil and pour it into each of the containers, and it will fill every one of those containers, and it won't stop till every container is filled. And that all represents God's abundance, God's love, God's good. And God's good will fill as much of the containers, as much capacity as we have. So I want you to think about the level of love that's going on in your life right now. And my question for you is, how much more love can you open yourself to? Or how much joy in are you allowing yourself to receive? And is there room for you to expand your capacity to receive? Because I think we sell ourselves short and settle so for far less because we're afraid to open ourselves or we don't feel fully worthy of that good. So in what ways can you be more kind and gentle to yourself? In what ways can you be more generous to yourself? In what ways can you be more loving and supporting of yourself? You know, this was the best vacation of my life because I think I treated myself better than I ever have before. I went to, I went to six different places. I spent more money on airline tickets than I ever have in my entire life. <laughs> you know, and I did things for me that made a difference for me. And it doesn't have to be extravagant, but it me means to make a difference to you. For me, traveling on airplanes isn't an easy thing. And with my leg braces, the, the uh, amount of space, it, it, it can be challenging. And I thought, you know what, I'm going to treat myself. And if the airlines are so wonderful, they, may, they, they don't have economy, uh, they did have economy, and they had this new thing called Economy Plus. And for the low, low price of $400, <laughs> I got four inches more of leg room. <laughs> And I'll tell you, that was one of the nicest things I ever did for myself. It sounds silly, but the question is, what is generous to you for you? What is being kind to you for you? What is being gentle for you for you? Another thing is sometimes, you know, people go on vacations and, you know, they're uh, ch chilling and say, oh, you're wasting this beautiful sun if you're just staying in. You know, and I had no guilt when I wanted to sleep in and spend all day in the house. Not a bit. I felt quite happy and blessed, actually. How many people have seen Game of Thrones? Game of Thrones? I'd never seen an episode of Game of Thrones. I watched seven years of Game of Thrones. <laughs> <laughs> I felt no guilt and no shame watching five consecutive episodes back to back. I thought, God, I live a good life. That's what I thought. <laughs> no guilt, there was no shame. You know, and I also put more planning and thought into, uh, into any, uh, in this vacation than any other one. Do you know, for all the places I went to, uh, and the places were Switzerland, France, uh, Edmonton, Alberta, Canada, Toronto, Ontario, Raleigh, North Carolina, and Hawaii. For every place I went, I sandwiched. I planned everything perfectly that I could come home for three or four days and be in my house and in my bed. Because as much as you love traveling, there's something nice about being in your own house, in your own bed. And I spaced it out so that it wasn't as overwhelming as it sounds. <laughs> and I would tell myself, Richard, it's okay for you to have a great summer. It's okay for you to have the best vacation of your life. It's okay to treat yourself well. You know what the thing about life is? We're all channels. God can only bring us as much good into our lives as we allow through our lives. And you accepting the most and opening a space for the most love and treating yourself with the greatest kindness and generosity and care is the greatest thing you can not only do for you, but for your family and for the people around you and this world. Because the more you allow yourself to be a channel of light, the more light and good and love and joy comes into the world, which will bless you and everyone around you. 
So what area can you increase your capacity to receive? I mean, is it love? Is it joy? Is it just treating yourself to some good things that you like? Because I guarantee you, doing that will open your life up to greater joy and fulfillment. And the final thing is about uh, just having fun. You know, it, it says in Scripture that to enter the kingdom of heaven, you must become as a child. And children are so playful and innocent and joyful, they call them bundles of joy. Kids laugh. I mean, they, life is supposed to be fun, and kids do that. And I'll tell you, I had so much fun this summer. The first thing that was so fabulous was I got to do uh, one of my niece's weddings. Four of them have gotten married, and I, they've all four asked me to do their weddings. I'm so touched to get to do their, their weddings. It's amazing. <laughs> there's 16, and there, um, there are 20 of them, so I have 16 more to go. But um, <laughs> it is an honor and a privilege, particularly because they're Catholic. I mean... And you asked me. So another one, I, 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 I went to, to Switzerland, and I went to the Montreux Jazz Festival. I also did a tour of the Nestle Chocolate Factory. <laughs> I learned a lot about chocolate, but it doesn't compare to how much chocolate I ate. I ate a lot of chocolate. They give samples at the end of the tour. It was incredibly delicious. I also had dinner at sunset on Lake Geneva. It was one of the most beautiful sights. Me and my sister, we had a great time. I went to um, uh, Gruyere, where they made Gruyere cheese, and I took a workshop where I made cheese. <laughs> you ought to be thankful I don't make cheese for a living. That's all I got to say. <laughs> you know, and when I went to Hawaii, that was an incredible experience. I took a helicopter tour uh, over Hawaii. It was one of the most brilliant and exciting experiences. I went to the Dole Pineapple Factory. And uh, I ate uh, a lot of pineapple ice cream. <laughs> I ate no sugar prior to, except for that last week in Hawaii, except the Switzerland thing. But you know, I, <laughs> <laughs> I had dessert every night. And you know, you heard of shave ice? They got this thing, shave ice? I hadn't had like a snow cone since I was a kid. I never had anything like that. I mean, literally for 45 years. And so I had one every single day. And one day I had it twice. <laughs> and my friend who I went with, he literally said this word. He said, Richard, you look like you're a little five-year-old boy enjoying that. And he said, it just makes me smile watching you eat that. I had no idea I was looking like a five-year-old boy. But <laughs> the fact is, I was so into it. it was so, I had so much fun. When I went to Raleigh, North Carolina, one of my dearest friends, Dave, we have a little tradition that he brings a little cooler pack. It had two chilled uh, Miller High Life beers and two Twinkies. And we uh, <laughs> toasted with the high life. And our toast is always the same, to new beginnings. And then the second one, we toasted with the Twinkies. And we toast always to new <laughs> beginnings. I went to Toronto for only three days because I was going to miss my sister's 60th birthday. And I know how important that was to her. And I had missed it because I didn't plan correctly. And the, they moved the party date. And so I flew up there just to spend three days with my beautiful sister and do some fun things because it meant a lot to her and it meant a lot to me. There are a lot of great things that go on in life and we've got to make sure we have a lot of fun. Make a commitment to have fun and to be joyful. And the fact is, everything, it's always easy when life goes our way, but sometimes there's, you can still have fun even when it doesn't go your way. I have a, a, a fridge magnet on my fridge and it says, life doesn't have to be perfect to be wonderful. We can't keep waiting for it to be perfect, to have fun, or to express joy, or to be thankful. Several things didn't go as well. A number of flights of mine got delayed. I had at least three, four-hour layover in, 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 in certain airports. My luggage got lost, and I had to wear the same clothes for two days. I had three hotel reservations go not so good, and because uh, I need a, a roll-in shower uh, for some of the places, and it didn't go uh, so great. I was in Hawaii, and there were hurricane warnings, and they said, you need to get water and snacks and be ready to hunker down for a few days, you know, and prayed a lot, and, uh, and it was kind of fun. It was like a camp out for a couple of days. Thank God every, everybody was safe. When I was in France, my sister doesn't drive a lot, and she's not comfortable driving, but her husband wasn't going to be there, and um, so she practiced driving for a long time, and we were driving uh, one night, it was 11 o'clock at night, you know, they have roundabouts, and it was a very uh, dark place, and the car died right at the roundabout. 
and it was not a safe place for a car to stop. It's 11 o'clock at night. Her cell phone had died, and we are like scared there, thinking, are we going to spend that, or cars are going to come whipping around and not see because it's so dark. You know, after about 30 minutes, this young couple came and stopped, and they stopped their car in a way that our car couldn't get hit. And because of the light, it made it uh, uh, less of a challenge. They looked at the car and they said, well, I don't think I can get this fixed because uh, if I, uh, they had a tool, there was no tool. And then the guy was, he called a, a mechanic. Mechanic came out and uh, said, it'll take 150 bucks just to tow your car somewhere. Uh, I can get it started now, but it's not gonna last too long. And the guy was so sweet, he drove the car himself to a mechanic place, walked back a mile or two and said, no charge. And then he used his phone to call a cab. And the cab said it was going to be 120 euro to take you up. And uh, drove us back. It was 90 euro. And I'll tell you, the right people showed up in the right way that even in the most difficult time, we went to bed that night as happy or happier than any of the other days where everything went well. And the point is that life isn't always going to go well, but don't let it stop us from seeing the joy and the beauty and things to be grateful for. In Thessalonians, it says, in all things give thanks, because this is God's will for you. That everything that's happening in your life, there's something to give thanks about. In all things have fun, because this is God's will for you. In all things express joy, because this is God's will for you. In all things see the positive, because this is God's will for you. And the whole point and plan of it is don't wait for life to be perfect that there's so much to rejoice and to give thanks uh, in right here and now. You know, we think that vacations are frivolous. No, they're not. They're wonderful adventures that renew us and refresh us in great ways and open us up to the fullness and the joy of life that we are meant to live. One of our favorite li lines in the Old Testament is, this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it every single day, vacation day, any day, every day, is a day for us to rejoice and to give thanks. One of the things that holds back our fun is sometimes that we, we, we judge ourselves so harshly, think that we're not good enough, we judge what we do, we judge our jobs, and that creates a lot of shame and feeling unworthy, and we need to leave that judgment and to relax and quiet our mind, to connect with the fullness of God. We need to open ourselves to know how worthy we are of a great and wonderful life, of so much love and joy, and to allow ourselves to have fun, to let loose, to be thankful, and express joy and thankfulness for this great life we have. You know, I kind of consider this a three-step formula for having a great vacation, but it's really a three-step formula for having a great life. It's not, it's, don't hold back. Let's open up and live life and live it more abundantly. And that is what I learned on my summer vacation. God bless you, everybody.